All right, buckle up because China just flipped the tech world upside down. And it's a wild ride. Back in 2023, they dropped a cool $2.6 billion on fancy lithography gear from ASML, the Dutch big shot and chip making machines. But now that's all toast. The US leaned hard on the Netherlands to yank export licenses for those DUV machines, leaving $15 billion worth of equipment in China totally bricked. No updates, no fixes, nothing. It's like a sucker punch from Uncle Sam, and China's not here for it. Instead of crying about it, Beijing's like, fine, we'll do it ourselves, and we'll do it better, kicking ASML and Taiwan's TSMC to the curb for good. This isn't some snap decision either. Way back in 2022, China started quietly beefing up its own chip game, pouring over $75 billion into state-backed funds. They're hitting all the big stuff, chip design, wafer production, lithography tech, you name it. It's not just cash. They've got a whole army of talent on this, pulling in 50,000 engineers from heavy hitters like Huawei, SMIC, and even some Silicon Valley returnees. They're not messing around, and it's paying off big time. In just three years, they've built a chip supply chain. That's almost all homegrown, and the world's sitting up straight, wondering how they pulled this off so fast. This is China saying, catch us if you can, and it's game on. So, while China's giving ASML and TSMC the boot, they're not just sitting around pouting, they're building a chip empire from the ground up. And it's wild how fast they're moving. They've been at this since 2022, rounding up a legit army of 50,000 engineers, pulling talent from Huawei, as might see, and even luring back pros from Silicon Valley. This isn't some small time gig. They've got factories buzzing with 60 to 70% homegrown gear. Now, cranking out chips and design software all stamped made in China. What the world thought would take a decade. They smashed it in three years flat and it's got everyone's jaw on the floor. Here's the real kicker. They're not even sweating the fancy EUV machines from ASML that cost 200 million bucks a pop. Nope, a Shenzhen crew called SAR says they've cracked DUV tech to turn out chips under seven nanometers, like the one in Huawei's Mate 60 Pro that had tech nerds freaking out. And SMIC? They're already testing five nanometer chips, aiming for three nanometer with some slick AI tricks and quad patterning. China's not playing catch up anymore, they're straight up leaping ahead, building their own rules. This isn't just about keeping the lights on, it's them flexing hard, showing they can run the show without the West holding their hand. The game's changing, and they're the ones shuffling the deck now. Okay, so while China's busy building its chip kingdom, the fallout's hitting hard, and it's not just about silicon anymore, it's getting messy with money too. When China slammed the door on ASML and TSMC, it wasn't just a middle finger to the US, it tanked ASML's revenue by a brutal 27% in Q4 2024. That's a massive hit for Europe's tech scene, like someone yanked the rug out from under them. But China didn't stop there. They're playing a bigger game, dumping US government bonds and cashing out of big name tech stocks like Apple and Nvidia. It's not just a chip war. Now, it's a full on currency showdown and Beijing's swinging hard. Here's where it gets real for you and me. If China keeps this up, it could shake Wall Street to its core. Analysts are freaking out, saying a few smart sell-offs could jack up mortgage rates, crash tech stocks, and wipe out retirement funds faster than you can save 401k. Imagine your house payment doubling or your savings vanishing. Because Beijing's playing chess with the global market. This isn't some far-off boardroom drama. It's coming for your wallet, your stability, everything you've got. China's not just making chips. They're stacking cash and clout, turning Shenzhen into what some are calling Dragon Valley. And if they pull this off, the US might not be the one calling the shots much longer. So while China's shaking up the money game, the US is feeling the heat big time and it's a total mess back home. This whole chip war's got the economy reeling, with markets tanking over $10 trillion in just one week, all thanks to Trump's trade wars and tariffs jacking up prices left and right. People are losing trust fast, and the White House sent out Caroline Levitt to smooth things over, but she just dodged the real stuff, pointing fingers at Elon Musk and Peter Navarro instead. She's like, Boys will be boys, brushing off their public spat, where Musk called Navarro dumber than a sack of bricks. It's chaos, and nobody's buying the chill act. Levitt's out there promising, there's not going to be any pain for American-owned companies and American workers, because their jobs are coming back home, but that's a tough sell. Farmers in Iowa, who shipped out $13.5 billion in produce last year, are freaking out about fertilizer and equipment costs skyrocketing. One guy's like, I'm more worried about what it's gonna do for chemicals, parts, all that stuff we need. Supply chains are a wreck. Food prices are climbing. And Moody's says 300,000 jobs got wiped out. Trump keeps saying prices will drop fast. 
Even claiming egg prices fell 79%, but PolitiFact's calling BS, that number's way off. People aren't living off promises. They're stuck with grocery bills that sting. And this no-pain line's starting to sound like a bad joke. Okay, so while the U.S. economy's taking a beating, Trump's tariff game's got everyone scratching their heads, and Canada's not playing nice anymore. His team's got this wacky formula for tariffs, exports minus imports divided by imports, and it's so off the wall. Even his big donor, Ken Langone, from Home Depot's like, I don't understand the goddamn formula, it's completely irrational. John Oliver jumped in too, roasting it hard, saying it's like taking your temperature by measuring your head's distance to the sun. Economists are baffled, billionaires are stumped, and it's costing billions. But Trump's still out here acting like it's genius. The whole thing's a hot mess and people are done trying to make sense of it. Then Canada's like enough of this, hitting back. With a 25% tariff on US cars and auto parts that don't fit their trade rules with Mexico. Prime Minister Mark Carney's not messing around, declaring at midnight, Canada would impose a 25% tariff on all US cars. Not complying with Kuzma, and it's a straight up power move against Trump's chaos. They're not just stopping there. Folks up north are boycotting American stuff hard, ditching US brands for their own or European goods. It's a full on buy Canada vibe and Carney's making it clear they're not here to be pushed around. This isn't just tit for tat. It's Canada saying, we're done with your nonsense and the trade war's heating up fast. So, while Canada and the world are ditching the US, they're not stopping there. They're full-on rewriting the playbook to cut loose from their southern neighbor. And it's got everyone paying attention. Tourism from Canada to the US has crashed 70 to 85%, and their Buy Canada movement's blowing up, with folks swapping out American brands for local stuff or European goodies. Prime Minister Mark Carney's laying it out plain, saying in a Richmond speech, the relationship between Canada and the US is no longer the same and Canada will no longer be manipulated by the US. Trade with the EU's up 7% thanks to their CETA deal, and Canadian businesses are jumping on that train fast, ditching the US market like it's old news. It's not just Canada either. Countries like Europe, Australia, Mexico, and South America are watching and copying the vibe, hunting for new trade pals. Even the $19 billion F-35 jet deal with the US? Canada's slashing it, only paying for 16 jets and keeping their options open for other suppliers. Carney's fired up declaring, we will fight, we will protect, and we will build. And in a trade war, just like in hockey, we will win. Portugal's bailing on F-35s too, and the EU's rejecting Trump's America first nonsense. The US is getting ghosted hard, and this isn't just a Canada thing, it's a global shift, leaving America out in the cold while everyone else teams up. Then Trump doubles down with some next level chaos. That's got the whole place reeling. He slaps a massive 104% tariff on China and bam, the markets just implode, losing trillions of dollars an hours like it's nothing. Caroline Levitt's out there trying to sell it, saying, if China reaches out to make a deal, he'll be incredibly gracious, but also that these tariffs are sticking because it's best for the American people. Nobody's buying it. This wasn't a win. It was a wrecking ball and the economy's shaking bad. Elon Musk's slamming it, calling out trade advisor Peter Navarro, while Levitt just shrugs. Boys will be boys, like it's all a playground scrap. Then it gets wilder. Levitt's defending this crazy plan to deport people, even US citizens, to El Salvador under the Alien Enemies Act, claiming every single person that has been deported qualifies for that deportation. Experts and regular folks are flipping out, saying it's flat out illegal, but Trump's team is treating immigrants and some Americans like threats, not people. It's not just splitting hairs, it's tearing the country apart with prices for clothes, electronics, Everything spiking at the store. Families are feeling the squeeze and trust in the government's hitting rock bottom. This tariff and deportation combo isn't making America great. It's making it a hot mess and the vibe's getting uglier fast. While all that's blowing up, Jamie Foxx swoops in and turns the whole disaster into comedy gold. And it's a straight up knockout. He nails this spot on impression of Trump hitting the voice. The frown, stuff like lots of great people on both sides. They tried to give me the virus, I beat the virus. The crowd's losing it, social media's on fire, TikTok and Twitter can't keep up with the memes, hitting 8 million views in a morning. Fox's take is everywhere, fake escalator rides, Big Mac rants, and folks are saying he should just take over Trump's rallies. Trump's fuming, blasting Truth Social at 3A, M calling Fox a low energy actor and botching his name, which only makes it worse. He's yelling fake news and terrible, but every tweet pumps Fox's icon higher. Meanwhile, he's at a chaotic press conference trashing Germany, saying they went so green they almost went out of business, and Canada claiming it's a drug den, killing Americans with zero proof to back it up. Allies are side-eyeing him hard, and Canada's not backing down, 
rolling out a $760 billion retaliation plan, boycotting U.S. goods, and flexing energy moves like cutting oil that powers half the U.S. supply. Mark Carney's making it clear they're done playing nice. Trump's still fumbling, ranting about Snoop Dogg and great people, but Fox has stolen the show, turning him into a punchline. The U.S. is bleeding cred, allies are bailing, and while Trump's tweeting and swinging at shadows, the internet's crowning Fox the real champ. This isn't just a roast, it's his image crumbling live.